What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. this is Robbie Amula, and today we're doing a Shopify analysis. So if you've been following Shopify lately, things have not been looking good. So this is Shopify back in March of 2021. As you can see, it's trading within an uptrend channel. Things are looking pretty good. The stock hits a high of over $1,700 per share, and then, unfortunately, it craters. Trading now at only $544 per share, and from the high, it's down around 70%. So Shopify is a very volatile stock. It has a beta of 1.7, which is 1.7 times more volatility than the general S&P 500 index. And so on my channel, basically what I do is I try to figure out if stocks are good long-term holds, and then I also do technical analysis to see which entry points I like for those long-term stocks that I already like. This is a very good example of a stock that if it is a good stock fundamentally and valuation-wise, then we really need to pay attention to these technicals to make sure that the chart looks okay when we go to enter a position into this. And, you know, there's a lot of things in this video that I think are going to be helpful, so I really hope you stick around and watch this whole thing. And I do also want to say thank you for everyone who answered the poll about whether I should go over a growth stock or a dividend stock this week, and 53% of you said growth and 47% dividend. So if you're a dividend investor, make sure you vote on the next one. Maybe I'll do a dividend stock next. Maybe I'll do a dividend stock next anyway. So we'll see. So here's what you can expect from this video. So by the end of this, you will be seeing this little thing, which is going to be my actual target price for Shopify stock. So I'm actually going to tell you what I think it's worth. It's going to be based on the price to sales valuation methodology. Now, I usually do also a discounted cash flow, EV to EBITDA, and a dividend discount model when I can, but for these stocks, I can't really do that, in my opinion at least, because cash flows aren't, um, there's not a lot of great cash flows to look at because they've been negative for a while. Even the EBITDA also does not have uh, great historical information. So we're gonna be going with just a price to sales model to find out the target price of the stock. Now we're also gonna be going over my CAT5 score, which is something I created to rank stocks. So in my CAT5 score, I'm going to compare Shopify to a bunch of different industry metrics to see how it compares. And then finally, at the end of this video, I'm going over technical analysis, which you probably do not want to miss because this is going to be an important one probably for this stock, even if you're not really into technical analysis, because it's honestly so volatile that I think you could really get hurt if you buy this at the wrong time. So anyway, I hope you stick around for this video and let's go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone so much for watching, and just remember, I'm not a financial advisor, this isn't financial advice, these are my opinions. Please do your own research and figure out what is best for you. Okay, so a quick 60 second rundown of what Shopify actually does in case you're not familiar. So I have actually been a Shopify uh, customer before. I've started three websites with Shopify before. None of them are still around, but I have started websites and I've paid them a decent amount of money over the time that I've had those websites. So basically, I have paid money to Shopify in terms of a few different things. So one, I have paid for just the subscription service. So I paid a certain amount of money every month just to have a store. Now when I created the store, there are certain things I wanted to add to my store and some of those things actually costed some money. And these are things like plugins to make my store look better or to integrate with certain things. And so I also paid for these different plugins for Shopify. And so they got some extra money from that route as well. And then when people went to purchase things from my store, Shopify also made some money off of the transactions. And so for me, with those different stores I had, those are some of the ways that Shopify would make money. Here's a few examples of Shopify stores. You go here, you would shop for whatever this company sells. This particular company sells cocktails. You could add the cart, you check out, it's all integrated from Shopify and they have their own payment system that you can integrate Shopify payments that allows Visa, MasterCard, American Express, everything you need. So in my experience with Shopify, actually I was a very happy customer. If I was to start another e-commerce e website, I would likely do it with Shopify again. Okay, so that's everything about Shopify. This video, I'm gonna be trying to make very quick, a lot quicker than my other ones. I'm gonna go straight into the price to sales valuation, tell you exactly what I had for the price target. So here's my price target. 2022 forecasted price target, $647. So, by the end of this year, this is the forecasted price target based on the valuation of price to sales I did. 
That would be about a 19% rate of return if this were to happen. 2026 price target, so we go further out, how much would Shopify be worth at that point? Well, it would be worth $1,406, which would be a 20.90% rate of return annually. So that is an amazing rate of return, of course. So very quick, I'm not going to go through all this data. If you do like more of the data-driven part where I go through this more, let me know in the comments below, but I'm just going to go through this very quick. There's three steps. So step one, I find the shares outstanding. I said that they're losing you 6% each year. Step two, sales forecast. I said that they're going to grow at 35% for, for two years, 30% 20%, 25%, 25%. That's my growth forecast. These are the growth numbers of the past few years. And then step three is just simply to find a price to sales multiple. These were the averages over the past few years, 28.11. I used a price to sales multiple much lower because currently the price to sales multiple is 14.86. So I just use a price to sales multiple of 14 for Shopify. So if this was to happen, and it's traded at 14 price to sales multiple by 2026, again, 20.90% rate of return. Now let's say it's not 14, if it's only a 10 price to sales multiple, well, you're still going to get by 2026, it would be a 13% rate of return. So still not that bad, but by the end of this year, it doesn't really do as well at negative 15.04%. And your price target doesn't really get hit until you know, 2023. So that's what I got for this. Next up, let's go through the Cat 5 score. Okay, this is the Cat 5 score. It's based on five different categories. I rearranged this a bit. I moved the Rolex score to the bottom. First thing we have here is the industry-based valuation. This goes over three different things. PE ratio, forward PE ratio, price to sales ratio, price to free cash flow. I derive uh, basically a, um, a score for these by putting these against the industry averages. Now there's a bit of a problem with this one to start off. So for PE ratio, we can't use PE ratio really for Shopify right now. And I'm going to show you why. So here's the financials for Shopify. You have these little things like other expense, loss of income before income taxes. So Basically, there is a line item here that is going to make it kind of impossible unless we adjusted this to figure out what uh, the earnings are right now. So you could always adjust it, but we're not going to do that in this video. But basically, if you look at the uh, look at the income from operations in 2020, it was 90 million, then 268 million by this year. But here, as you can see, when you get down to net income. It's 319, but here it's 2.9 billion, and that's because there's this line item right here, other expense income net. And essentially, I haven't looked exactly into this, but Shopify had shares in a company that they had to book on their income statement. So essentially, this is a one-time thing, so we can't use this to assume earnings going forward. So going back, the industry-based valuation, again here, P ratio, we can't use this, so I'm taking it out of my score. The next thing we have is the forward P.E. ratio. Now the forward P.E. ratio is 108. Huge, very high forward P.E. ratio, but what we do is we actually compare these with the industry averages. So we go over here and these are all the different price to earnings ratios, the forward price to earnings ratios of the entire industry that Shopify operates in. What I do is I rank them into deciles, which you could also call them the top 10% lowest forward P.E. would be this one the next 10% highest PE, the next 10% highest, right? So these are deciles. This would be the 10% most expensive PEs, forward PEs, would be down here in decile 10. So what we do is we look to see where this is in this decile system, and actually at 108, it's only in the seventh decile. So it does get a couple points for this in my score, but usually this is a very high forward PE ratio. You wouldn't give much weighting to this, but because of the industry, we're going to give it a bit. So we come over here. This is decile 7. Uh, if it's decile 7, it still gets 2 points. So this gets 2 points right here. Next up, we have the price to sales ratio. It's in the 8th decile. We don't like that. It's got to be in the 7th decile or less to get any points. So it gets a 0. Price to free cash flow. It's in the 10th decile. 151. So very, very high. So that's not good either. Shopify does not get any points. Way too high of a free cash flow, price to free cash flow. At 15 potential points, remember we're not doing anything with PE ratio. It got two, only for forward PE ratio, which also is pretty high, but it still gets points. It's based on the industry average. So we have 13% pure valuation score. Not very good. I like to be this, I like this to be at 70% or more. 
Let's move on to the industry-based profitability. For industry-based profitability, like I said, we're not going to go over net margin because that uses net income, which we're not going to rely on for this because of that one-time item. So we're going to go for gross margin. We do have a sixth decile for gross margin, so not too bad. Sixth decile gets a two points here, uh, which is 53.80 is the actual uh, gross margin of Shopify. Gets two points at five, so 40% for the industry-based profitability. Next up, how does Shopify do when compared to its industry in terms of growth? So what we do is we take the five-year compound annual growth rate of different factors. For example, revenue. Guess what? Shopify, first decile in revenue growth. Oh my, it is amazing. This company is growing top-line revenue at an amazing rate. 64% in CAGR for five years. Incredible. So this is a growth machine. Next up, we have the score of this, which is a five. That's the total score you can get being in the one to four decile. Next up, we're not doing earnings per share. Remember, free cash flow. I use free cash flow. I did two year average or one or two year average. That gets a five. So I gave it some credit there. It does get 100% for pure growth. So this is a great growing company. So this Cat5 score helps you distinguish what type of buckets may be doing well and may not. Next, we have liquidity, and this company does really well in liquidity. So debt to equity ratio, the industry average debt to equity ratio is 3.42. This has 0.08. It's got no debt. It's an amazing company in terms of debt. Don't have to worry about debt for this company right now. Uh, score of five, the best possible score. So liquidity-wise, it's good. And then finally, we have the Rolex score. And it uses Piotrowski F score. Take a look at my video on that if you want. I'm not going to go over it here, but I want a Piotrowski F score of seven or more, and if it's five or six, it still gets a few points, two points. So uh, it is a five, Piotrowski F score is a five. So I give this a score of a two. So it does get some points. Shares outstanding, however, we like them to be decreasing or being stable, but they are increasing. So I'm not giving it points here. It gets 20 Rolex score, not that great. So now this is all done. What do we have? We have a total score of 21 points for Shopify, the total possible score is 45, and that gives us a 47% Cat5 score, like to be 70% or more. So, okay, like I said, we're going to go through the actual price target of the stock, which I did already. That's our price target, 647 uh, for this year, 2022 uh, forecasted price target, 18.85% uh, rate of return if it hits this target by 2022. That's my price target. Now, okay, that's a great price target. But I invest a bit differently than some people. So a lot of people, they would say, okay, that's my price target. I'm going to invest in the stock because it's under my price target. I'm not exactly like that. I like to look at the technicals of the stock. Now for this stock particularly, I think it's very important to do this. So I hope you watch this section because I think this is going to be something that you're going to want to see. Now you might be one of the people that did own this stock at these higher levels. And I'm sorry if you did. I know it's got to hurt, but you know, there's always, there's always some light at the end of the tunnel, find the next stock. I'm sure you'll do fine, but just make sure that you watch this part because here we have a giant downtrend channel and this thing just fell 70%, around exactly 70% from this peak to this current level that it's at right now. So the question is, a lot of people say, well, now it's, it's fallen 70%, it can't fall anymore. So I'm going to show you some other price targets that are going to show you that the stock can potentially still fall more. So I want to point out that I have some big support areas here that go back pretty far, all the way back until August of 2019, some of them March 2020, uh, November of 2019. So these are longer term, further back support areas that I'm seeing that this stock is falling towards. Now there are a few things we need to focus on here. So this is in a downtrend channel. This Top of this line here is the area where this needs to break out of. So it needs to break up through this downtrend line and then it needs to probably consolidate, which means trade up and down a bit in this range. And it might, what might happen, I think, is going to be when it hits some of these support levels. So the stock is trading under its 50 day and 200 day moving averages. That's not good. So that's going to act as probably some resistance with this stock. Also, when it comes to RSI, it is going down a bit. It is getting close to oversold levels, which can be a good thing, but still, this is going down. This is pointing down. 
MACD is flat, but it is also pretty far down there. But the oscillator isn't telling me much. MACD honestly is not telling me much right now. So that gives us these different things. So these are support areas I see. So okay, now we're way zoomed in here. We're looking back only until January of 2022. So this is just a few months old. So from where we are now, what can happen with the stock? Well, if I, I have these different support areas here, if it stays inside this downtrend channel, what could potentially happen is we see, uh, let's see, at 566 down to one of these other support areas. So it could be a 27% decline to get to $407 per share. That's 27%. So it can still fall further or it can go down another through that support level that I see to the other support, which is 323. That's a 41% decline. It can further go to this other support, which is a 50% decline, which is 279. So there's definitely potential for the stock to decline further. Now, if you're the type that's just long-term investor, just buys, holds, doesn't care about entry prices. Okay, well, I already told you my, my uh, price target for the stock. Um, yeah, that's my opinion, of course. So do your own due diligence, see if you agree with me or not. That's what I think. So anyway, that's all we have for this video. I hope this helps. Uh, Shopify, maybe it could be good sometime in the future. Waiting to see what happens technically. Remember to be careful with this stock. And of course, hit the like button if you found some value out of this. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. Subscribe if you liked it, please. And watch another one of my videos on the end screen coming up right now.